Nobody likes a bland and watery peach cobbler. Recipes using fresh peaches can be a little bit tricky. I'm going to show you how to make a filling that has the perfect syrupy consistency and a biscuit topping that's crisp and tender. Plus, you're not going to want to miss my tips for ripening and peeling, so stick around. To get started, set the oven rack to the middle position. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Grease a 9 by 13 inch baking dish with 1 tablespoon of softened butter. Set aside. For the peach cobbler recipe, you're going to want to grab 4 pounds of fresh peaches. To tell if they're ripe and ready to use, make sure that the flesh is a little bit firm and then soft to the touch when you press it, just a little bit. But if it's still rock hard, it's not going to be sweet and juicy, so you're going to want to ripen a little bit longer. And I have a quick trick for you to do so. So grab a paper bag, put the peaches in the bag, in a single layer and then you're going to want to close the bag up and leave that in the bag for about 24 hours. What's going to happen is that the peaches have a natural um, hormone called ethylene and that ethylene gas when it's emitted and trapped inside of the bag is going to ripen the fruit faster. If you want to speed this up even quicker you could put a banana in the bag. Thanks! So you just put that inside too, wrap it up and in a day, check it, see if the texture is a little bit softer, and if you're starting to smell a stronger peach aroma, they're ready to use. Oh! <laughs> okay, these are ready to go, but if you're wanting to make the peach cobbler out of season, you can definitely use frozen peaches, which I just recommend in, during the pre-cooking stage to cook it for five minutes longer, or you can use canned peaches, but because the canned peaches are treated with a firming agent, usually a calcium salt, it's gonna be a little bit firmer and have less moisture, so when you mix it together and make the filling, you're not gonna have as much juices. So I would use about half the amount of flour for thickening. Now let's make the filling. The first step you're going to do is peel the skin off the peaches. If the peach is nice and firm and ripe, you can use a hand peeler to do that and that's going to be nice and quick. Or if the peaches are a little bit softer and more ripe, you can actually use a really cool trick I learned in culinary school, which is the blanch and shock method. It's going to boil the peaches just for a few seconds and it's going to help release the skin from the flesh. So I will show you both ways. Remove the skin from the firm peaches using a hand peeler. See how easily that comes off of the flesh? Now I'm going to show you the Blanche and Shock method. The first thing we need to do is score the bottom of the skin so that we could peel it easily later. For softer peaches, cut a shallow 2 inch wide X on the bottoms. Okay, these are ready to go. Let's go ahead over to the stove. Submerge and blanch one to two peaches at a time in boiling water until the skin starts to separate from the flesh, about 10 to 20 seconds. Immediately transfer to a bowl of ice water to cool for about one minute. Shocking the peaches in an ice cold water bath is going to immediately stop the cooking process. If you find that it's still hard to peel the skin from the flesh, just cook it in the boiling water for a few more seconds. Now let's go peel the peaches. Wow, see how easy it is to remove the peel? Use your fingers to remove the skin. Now that the peaches are peeled, let's slice them up. Cut the peaches into 3 quarter inch thick wedges and transfer to a large bowl. This should yield about eight cups of sliced peaches. Sometimes the peaches can get a little bit slippery, so when I take them, remove them from the pit, I'll put them on a paper towel, uh, on a on a towel, so that I can just safely pop them out like that. Add one third cup brown sugar quarter cup flour, 
2 teaspoons lemon juice, a half a teaspoon cinnamon, quarter teaspoon ginger, quarter teaspoon salt, and an eighth teaspoon nutmeg. Stir to combine. Spread the peach filling evenly in the baking dish. Fresh peaches contain a lot of moisture. As they start to cook, that water is going to be released and the flesh starts to soften as the pectin breaks down in the cell walls. I like to add flour and brown sugar to help thicken the juice so that it's a syrup-like consistency. Let's go pre-bake the peaches. Bake until the filling starts to bubble and lightly thicken, about 15 minutes. While the peach filling is baking, let's make the biscuit topping. In a medium-sized bowl, whisk together one and a half cups flour, one third cup granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoons baking powder, a quarter teaspoon baking soda, and a half teaspoon salt. Toss five tablespoons of cold cubed butter into the flour mixture. Use fingers to break into small pieces until the mixture resembles cornmeal or wet sand. Stir in 3 quarters cup of buttermilk. The topping will be wet and look like very thick cake batter. Cooking the filling first without the topping is going to allow the juices to simmer and some of that moisture to evaporate for effective thickening. This is going to prevent the texture from being runny. Drop about two tablespoon sized mounds evenly on top of the peach filling, about 12 mounds. In a small bowl, combine one tablespoon granulated sugar, a quarter teaspoon cinnamon, and one eight teaspoon ginger. Evenly sprinkle over the topping and filling. Just for comparison, a cobbler is more like this. It has a bumpy texture and a more coarse cake-like structure. And a crisp is more like this. It has a more crunchy surface because there's no leavening agents or buttermilk in the formula. Now let's go get this in the oven. Bake the peach cobbler until the topping is golden brown, about 25 to 30 minutes. Cool for 20 to 30 minutes before serving. This will allow the filling to thicken more as it cools. Now that the peach cobbler has cooled down a little bit, we could go ahead and dig right in. Or if you want to make this in advance, cool this down completely, pop it in the refrigerator, and then reheat at 375 until it's hot and bubbly. You can serve this with a dollop of whipped cream, eat it as is, but for me, I love it with a big scoop of vanilla ice cream that right on top. If there's any other techniques or recipes you'd like to see, feel free to share in the comment section below and I'll see you guys down there. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind peach cobbler and if you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It means a lot when you do. And if you like this video, make sure to check out this one. It's a good one. Thanks for watching and remember, cook with confidence. You got this. See you later. Mmm, this is so good.